Cheat three here. So you want to get started designing and building your own Lego puzzle boxes. It's going to be a lot of fun. One thing you don't want to be doing is searching through this huge box of Legos with all sorts of stuff mixed in. Most Lego pieces that you get in like these uh, retail boxes, there's a lot of junk in there and you're not going to use any of it. The first thing you're want, going to want to do is separate out the wheat from the chaff. So this video shows you the pieces you're going to need and explains why you'll need some and why you may only need a few of some and none of a lot of the pieces. Let's take a look. So if you want to get started uh, building your own Lego puzzle boxes, there's basically two approaches. One is to find one that you like and get going on it. Um, but there's not a lot of tutorials out there for some of these puzzle boxes. And maybe you don't want to build one that you found online, somebody else's design. You want to get to exploring your own design. If that's the case, the first step is to get together the Legos that you're going to need. Um, and so what I've tried to do here is pick out a set of Legos that are the most useful, that I find the most useful, uh, when I am trying to uh, design my own puzzle box. So I'm going to walk through a little bit of description here. Uh, the first is you're going to need some of these big plates. Uh, you don't need a lot of those though, uh, and I don't think you need many duplicates. Um, you might use these on the bottom, although I usually find that I don't use one in its entirety for the bottom of my designs because I like to have things that interact with the bottom layer. Um, and you might use them for the top, but usually you can construct a bottom that you need out of one of these and maybe some of these other uh, plates. You'll need some plates, but you don't need many. Uh, just something to get, to get you uh, putting pieces on. Oftentimes I'll build something on a plate and then I'll pull that plate off at the end and put the uh, bottom layer on that I want. You'll need a couple of long pieces. So we have these one by eight plates. A plate is a Lego that is uh, not tall and that has studs on it. So if it's taller, it's called a brick. So this is a brick. This is a one by six brick. This is a one by six tile because it's smooth on top. And then we have the one by six plates here. When, when you're building something with, uh, with gaps in it, this helps you span those gaps and give strength. Um, we have a few of these two by four plates and tiles. Those are more often used uh, on the top or bottom layers still. Um, although the tiles start to become really important because uh, that allows movement within the interior of the box. So you need a smooth surface rather than, rather than a studded surface for pieces to move on. And so a lot of times these two by four tiles give us that uh, smooth surface on the interior of our puzzles. Uh, these two, two by threes and one by three plates are also very common um, because uh, often you're doing things that are intricate and these bigger numbers with fours, for example, or sixes, uh, they're almost too big to be useful in a lot of the intricate things that we're trying to do. Uh, so three ends up being a really important number because uh, with a three plate, you can uh, span a gap, right? So you can have a stud, a hole, and then another stud. And that three plate helps you do that without overextending itself into the next thing that you're trying to do. Um, these two by three tiles are a little bit rare. You can see mine, the only one that I have left now is a little bit dark. Um, and I'd rather use bright pieces so you can see them on the video, but I don't have any right now. Uh, these are, are pretty nice pieces actually, and I use those a lot in the keys that I make and the buttons that I make. Um, another piece that's very, very important are these corner plates and corner tiles and corner bricks. Uh, the reason that the corners are more useful, for example, than just a square is because uh, they have a gap in them. They, they, have, they use less space. Um, so they actually give you a lot of the strength of having a square, but because there's uh, an opening here, 
um, they can fit in into other places and leave room in the interior of your puzzle box. Or, you know, we use these a lot when we make a little key where um, we need an arm sticking out, right? So we might put this together with a uh, with a, a one by four and then connect those maybe with our one by six like this. And now we have this little arm sticking out on our, on our key here. So that you can't really get that uh, with the two by twos. You can get that only with these two by two corners. And that's what they are called. They're called two by two corners. Um, and that's really useful because when you have that stud sticking out on its own, you can put, for example, a resistor on that. So I can take these one by two tiles that don't have studs uh, or tubes on the underside. And now if I put that on that arm that's sticking out, it can slide back and forth within there. And now my key is constrained and also has some resistance to movement. Um, so th these are really versatile. They're good for the corners of your boxes. They're good for creating arms and they're good for uh, creating structure that doesn't take too much space. Uh, and so, yeah, so we have the one by threes and the one by three tiles, um, one by fours and one by four tiles. They're still useful, uh, even though uh, they, some, they may not be as versatile, um, they're very useful still. Uh, oh yeah, so we have these Technic grooved bricks. So these are one by four bricks uh, that come, uh, they're, they're Technic, which is a sort of a sub branch of Lego that is more mechanical. And so we use Technic pieces when we build these puzzle boxes. And the reason this is nice is because it has this groove through the middle, and then there's these plates with rails. And so you can ha have something to have this sort of guided movement in here. Uh, and then you can block off the end so that whatever is hitting the end, when this rail hits the end, it gets locked in place and it doesn't come out. Uh, and we don't like the puzzle pieces to come out if they don't have to. Okay, this is a sort of a rare piece, but it's really important sometimes in designing keys that you want to lock. Um, so this is a one by four plate with two studs instead of four studs. So the middle is almost like a tile and the outside is like a plate. And the reason this is really nice is because uh, you can build up something and then leave a hole here for a key to, to, to slide in and lock. Uh, so you can have something that'll move, but then you can un open it and unlock this. Um, so those are useful. Uh, we have over here, these axles. So these sort of have the cr a cross section that's shaped like a, an X here. So um, these are good for pushing and pulling, uh, for connecting pieces. Um, and those fit really nice and snug into these axle bricks. And so if I push this in, there's a little bit of resistance as I move through there. And that, uh, that's really nice. So I've got, you wanna have at least three of these, probably three different lengths. Um, sometimes they have a head on the end of them, so they're kind of look, look like a nail, and other times they don't. Um, if they have that nail head on them, then when you stick them through these bricks with holes, so this is not an axle hole in the shape of the axle, it's just a hole. So this slide nice uh, and clean through there, uh, but then that nail head will stop it at the end so they keep it from going all the way through. So we have a couple of these. Uh, you'll want some holes on one by one bricks. Uh, and they also offer them on the one by twos with two holes instead of one. Um, so you can decide which ones you like. I like to have a rack and pinion. And so my rack, a rack is basically a gear that's straight. Let me hold this up here. That's what it looks like. It's on the bottom, I can connect this to a brick. I think I can snap it right onto this one by four plate, like that. And um, the thing that's nice about a rack and pinion is you can have rotational mo movement and uh, turn that into linear movement or vice versa. So I can take my little pinion gear. A pinion is just a small gear that is uh, usually doesn't have many teeth on it and I put that through my axle. And now, as I rotate this, I can 
move my rack left and right. That's just a useful uh, thing to have when you're designing puzzle boxes. Let me just remove that plate, stick that back there. Uh, you're gonna have one by one bricks. You don't need too many of these, uh, but they are useful from time to time. You might have one of these with the stud on the side here. So I've got a purple one, you can see here, it has a stud on the side. I don't like a lot of those because I'm not typically trying to build realistic looking uh, Legos to where I need studs not on top. Um, but sometimes they're useful. Uh, oh yeah, these window bricks are extraordinarily useful, but they're not common, so, um, or not that common. The thing that's nice about them is, uh, and there's two kinds, there's a window brick that does not have an under tube, and that's the kind that we like to have. So this is uh, just a one by two brick, but it has, it's hollow on the inside. It doesn't have an under tube like a traditional one by two brick would. Um, and that's, I think that Lego did that because they wanted their windows to be more transparent. Well, so that not having an under tube lets us create buttons out of that because we can put that on a stud and slide it back and forth and there's not an under tube in there to block it. Uh, so you're gonna want four of those, and usually when we make buttons, you can make it out of one, but very often I'll put two of these side by side and put a little square plate, a square tile on top like that, and then you have a button that is nice and big and pushy. Okay, so four of these window uh, bricks are over here. And uh, then we get into the one by twos and the one by ones. Um, you're going to want a few 1x2 bricks like we have here, but you, you don't want to build typically a big huge box out of these bricks because bricks are bulky and they don't let you do precise um, or granular things in your puzzle box. Um, and so usually when we're building up walls we're using plates instead of bricks and the plates actually let us uh, create structures that are uh, actually a little bit stronger because we can lay them like a mason would and stagger them and build extra strength in through the puzzle box. Um, and so these one by twos are really probably the most common thing you'll be using when you're trying to find little mechanisms and build up structure and fill little spaces. Um, we do like, we like to avoid using the one by ones whenever possible. So here I've got a, just a stack of one by ones. Um, they're all gray except for this one on the end. Uh, and, but sometimes you just need a single stud. And so you're, you're gonna need these things. And uh, believe me, these are hard to keep track of. So when you get those, separate them out and keep track of them separately. You'll want a few one by one tiles. Um, because sometimes you want just a single smooth surface. Um, I don't recommend using round uh, plates or tiles very much. So we have two of each uh, here, but sometimes you want to use them to help something not get caught on a corner. Uh, so if two corners are sort of passing across each other, they can get stuck and replacing that with a round uh, plate or a round tile can often alleviate that um, interference. And then we get to the probably what I consider the most important uh, piece of Lego for puzzle boxing and it's these one by two tiles. They're smooth and they like these window bricks uh, they don't have an understud and unlike these window bricks they're very common uh, and so the, again these are ones where you can get nice little movements. Uh, your button might end up pushing something like this um, and it just slides back and forth really nicely. It can be used to create smooth surfaces. Uh, on the, it can be used to decorate. Um, and so they're very versatile and useful. So you're gonna want at least 15 of those, I would say. All right, uh, I hope this has been helpful. If you wanna get to puzzle boxing and you don't know where to start and you want to do your own ideas, um, I, I recommend just collecting uh, a set of Legos similar to this one uh, and let it inspire your imagination. 
If you found this video helpful, you may want to subscribe to the Cheap 3 YouTube channel. And don't forget to hit the like button.